is I'm doing what I love to do. I enjoy what I do. I want all of you to have that same privilege that I have had in my life, is to be able to do what you want to do for a living and enjoy it every day. Now, it wasn't always pleasant, okay? Being a professor at Case Home isn't always pleasant, especially, especially after an exam, okay? <laughs> but I do enjoy it. And my life, I feel, is good. I'm going, man, what a great life, doing what you'd love, like to do. So in this time, find what you want to do. Now, what is that picture? Bark, okay? <laughs> Got all these clues. You've been in medical school too long. <laughs> See the forest. We have bar. Now, doesn't it somehow, if you were in a satellite, might look like a mountain range or something like that? <laughs> sometimes, with all the detail you've gotten in medicine, you know, sometimes you think you're in some other world. Okay, you thought you were going to help people, and now you're talking about all this microbial trivia. Okay, <laughs> how does that help people to know about Staphylococcus aureus? Okay. What's a drug to kill it? That's what I want to know. <laughs> So he's telling me about lipotechoic acid and toxic shock syndrome toxin and all that, the mechanism of action, all those. Okay, so we gave you a lot of details. Yeah, we did. Okay, a lot of details. And the thing is, is that now I encourage you strongly is to take all that content and start making connections, okay? Bark. Think about bark, okay? Anybody have a botany class? Okay, so I'm not... There's a couple. Okay, so you'll hold me honest on this. There's xylem and phloem in bark, right? Xylem and phloem are important for the tree, right, to survive. Stuff goes up, stuff goes down. Capillary action's involved somehow. I don't remember. It was way back when I took botany, okay? And the thing is, is without bark, what happens to the tree? It dies, and you don't get this. Think about the vista of seeing a forest. But that bark and all those details lead you to appreciate. Wow, how, what beauty and all that. But you know what? In order to make the connections, you have to reflect on how that all works together. For instance, I have a child in sepsis. Okay? LPS, well, LPS, remember that old friend, hemdotoxin? Okay? You know, gram-negative sepsis can induce that inflammatory system to go crazy, interleukin-1, peripheral edema, the, uh, cardiac output at first is good, and then it goes down. Uh, we have shock developing, all these things. You know what? There's all a bunch of physiology involved. Oh, uh, yeah, compensated and decompensated, uncompensated shock. We have peripheral pooling. Well, are they clammy or are they cold? Are they warm? All that stuff. You know, physicians every day connect those dots. What drug do I use to treat this infection? How do, what respiration rate should I give this child? How do I know their kidney function is working appropriately? What can we do to evaluate their cardiac output? Where, how do we even, for beginning residents, how do we start the central line? <laughs> okay. So we can measure these things. All of these things connect together. Now you're gonna be scared again. Don't be too scared, okay? They give you time to make connections, but use this time to make the connections, to connect the dots, because the deal is, is we have a little kid that's going to die. It may die no matter what you do, but the thing is, is why did you come here? I think most of you came because you wanted to help that little kid. Connecting the dots can help that little kid. So see the forest. See why you did this. Why do crazy Chamberlain, why does he at the end of graduation count out how many students and calculate the number of people that are helped? Because I want to know that in this tree-filled world that I live in, that somehow I'm accomplishing something better. 400,000 people can be helped every year because I invest in you. Wow, what a privilege to do that. So make the connections. Now. Last thing, I'm almost, almost done, folks. Last thing is, to whom much is given, much is required. You all have been given much. How many of you have had to tell people that you love over and over again, I can't be here tonight because I've got to study? How many of you had to do that? Okay. And guess what? What did those people do? Some days they got mad. <laughs> Some days they said, okay, we see the greater good. This is what we're going to try. How many of you have had parents or significant others in your lives that have sacrificed so that you could get here? Okay, yeah, okay. 
That's cool. That's good. Okay, now for me, I feel guilty about that. Okay, and I'll tell you how to better respond, okay, than what I did. You have been given much. 2,000 people tried to get those seats that you're sitting in right now. 2,000 in your class. And you have the privilege of sitting in this class, right? And I'm glad because you're a good bunch. I really enjoyed you guys, okay? Uh, there's more people in this class than what I remember. <laughs> it's, it seems larger than what I remember. <laughs> remember, you're adults. I don't care. <laughs> okay. so, so you have been given much, a lot of love from people around you, a lot of sacrifices from people around you, and you are brilliant people, okay? You've been given brains to help others, to do great things for other people. And the fact that KSUM, even though you don't believe it necessarily, have tried to pour lots of their hopes and dreams into all of you so that you could be that person that you want to be. So you've been given much. Okay, now there's two ways. And so the question is, how do you respond? Well, there's two ways to respond. The one way I usually respond when my mom told me was that was guilt, fear, and anxiety. Okay? That's a bad way to respond, folks. I don't want you feeling guilty and fearful about all that people have invested in you. Okay? I want you to say, okay, yes, they have. And I have been given a lot. Okay? There's another way to respond to all this. And that is with gratitude. You know what? This week, thank those people that invested in you and gave up for you and loved you, even though they hated your guts when you left. Okay? Thank them. Be grateful for what they've done. Be grateful for what's been invested in your cranium so that you could survive this ordeal we call medical student. Grateful for what you've been given and a feeling of being privileged to serve others so that those people, realize this, if a physician helps someone, they can go to work. If a physician helps someone have a leg that they might have lost, now they can do what they want to do with their life. If a physician helps a little kid who's got an earache and can't stand it, you've helped that mom who's not slept for three nights and that little kid who's no longer hurting. Have you forgotten why you got here? You're going to get to see that again. You're going to be helping people in just a few weeks, folks. Helping people, connecting the dots, doing what you've been wanting to do. You're going to be serving others, and it is a privilege to serve. It's really exciting to be able to serve others and help them. And so rather than feeling guilty, fearful, and anxious, enjoy this. Be grateful for those around you and serve. Help others so that they can live their lives, and you can contribute to something bigger than yourself. And so, how did I respond? Okay, taking those three things. My dad said, do what you want to do in life, not what you have to do. So what did I do? I became a faculty member at KCOM, an excellent place. And you know what? I enjoy it. You, you probably have figured that out by now. I do <laughs> enjoy what I do for a living. I encourage you to find out what you love and do it. Secondly, I realize that teaching students is my forest. To a large extent, teaching students helps me contribute to the greater good. And every year, I do that calculation so that I can see, yes, Neil, you've done something that's helped others. Hopefully in some small way. I know there's a bunch of other faculty out here <laughs> besides myself. But in some small way, I've helped build that forest that people can then look back on and enjoy the beauty of. And then lastly, I'm grateful and feel privileged to serve each one of you and enjoyed you while you were in class because I had the privilege to force you, one way or another, <laughs> to come to my microbial world and show that to you. So, what do I encourage you to do? One, do what you want to do, not what you have to do, okay? See the forest, reflect on all the detail, and try to sort it all out so that you can then gratefully serve, okay? I encourage you to gratefully serve. And thanks for putting up with Chamberlain one more time. Because I think that in doing those three things, that you will make me and KCUM proud of you. Thanks. We made a little last lecture. Thing for Dr. Chamberlain, so thank you very much.